Well, hi guys. I'm sorry that I volunteered for this because of the reason you're not going home uh, 35 minutes early or something like that. Um, I did this presentation at a couple of user groups, so I apologize in advance if you've seen this, but hey, last minute presentation, why not? Okay, as a show of hands here, who knows anything about LabVIEW Next Gen? Great, so I'm not going to panic the whole room when I go, there's a new version of LabVIEW coming. <laughs> <laughs> right, next question. Who here has actually tried to use LabVIEW Next Gen for a project? That's actually more than I was expecting. Um, well, I kind of get the impression that we're a select little group, and effectively everybody is waiting to see who falls off the edge and if we swim before the rest of you then go, yeah, we'll try. <laughs> so, so I kind of decided, especially because of my job role, I'm worried about the day somebody's going to phone up and go, right, I've got an application written in LabVIEW Next Gen. Can you help? My bosses will go immediately, yes, we can always help. <laughs> At that point, I wanted to know, do I need to book holiday now and run, or can I actually help? So I decided probably the best way to do it would be to do a project. The reality is no customer is going to give me a project straight away to try it because far too risky, it would be unfair. So I decided to lock myself in a room for four hours and try and do the CLD exam. So to put this into perspective, I installed it. Next day, went in four hours in the exam, first time ever opening it because I think we're all kind of sitting there going, what is the learning curve? How difficult is it? So that's what I'm presenting on today. Hopefully you find it interesting. There's no real technical content, so you can all kind of nod off a little bit if you want. <laughs> so, a uh, quick show of hands, does everybody know what the CLD exam is? Yeah, brilliant, so we can skip over those slides nice and quick. I'll explain the exam paper I did, but it's the ATM machine, so I think everybody in the room has probably seen that as well, so that will make those slides nice and quick. Then go over the good points, and then go over the things that changed, then caught me out. Do not be discouraged that most of my presentation is on the stuff that's changed, but the good points and the new features you guys can find for your own and you get those little happy moments, I don't need to pop those bubbles, but the things that caught me out in the exam, maybe I'll save you guys going through the same sort of hurdles. So that's the idea. So we're all familiar with this, we all know what the CLD exam is, but four hours to make an application from start to finish. As I said, did the ATM controller, so I would have thought if you've, any of you have done the CLD exam, it's the test paper, the practice one, so it was dead easy to do. I quite liked doing it because I did it in the past in normal LabVIEW, and then I had that lethargic moment of going next gen and something I did four years ago, and they actually look vaguely familiar, so that's probably a good sign. Um, so you all know you've got four hours to make an application that you can insert a card, check the account details, withdraw, all the normal things. So the first thing you get when you do a CLD exam is they give you the interface. It turns out the prep material, at least when I did this, hadn't been updated, so there's no one for a next gen. So the first challenge in my exam was, let's make a new front panel. And actually, it was really quick and easy to do, so that's always a plus. I could find the controls. There's a little caveat I need to say here about my presentation. I did this probably four to six months ago. So I was using LabVIEW 2.0. I think the normal release at the moment is 2.1, and there's a beta release of a newer version. So I think everything I'm saying is up to date, apart from if Sasha here goes, oh, well, that's in now. Don't hang me yet, please. <laughs> but I'm sure it will be interesting. So how did it go? Actually, really good. Um, I was quite impressed. So to give you a bit of context, I'm now a CLA. I'm quite quick at LabU. I reckon a CLD exam will take me about three hours. So I did this in four hours 15. I know there's somebody in the audience who's going to go, you're only allowed four hours to see. And it's like, yeah, well, so close, I wanted to finish it so I could demo it. So basically, an hour 15 minutes, I went from not knowing the API at all to actually getting a finished bit of product. And it only slowed me down by an hour. And that hour, to be fair, most of it I've learned now and I wouldn't do again. So I thought that was a really, really big positive to have. I was actually surprisingly impressed, and no offense to the other guys in the room, when you guys say something is easy and it's gonna solve all my problems, I am really, really hesitant until I try it myself. <laughs> so I will honestly now go on a record and say it's actually quite easy to pick up, and I'm very glad I can say that. 
so there was a couple of amazing features, and you guys, when you get in there, you're going to find them for yourself. So I just want to pick a couple. The Zoom, I personally have a love-hate relationship with this Zoom, and you'll explain, understand why when I get to it. But the fact you can zoom out and zoom in, especially when we get spaghetti code from our customers, is actually going to be really useful rather than that stupid navigation window that takes two minutes to load, and then you get that really sinking feeling where you see that you're only seeing this tiny little blob. So I look forward to the Zoom. That's going to make my life easier. Quick drop, and this is probably the only thing, if you can only take one thing from this whole presentation, if you're not using Quick Drop, start using it today. The reason is on Labby Next Gen, the palettes have rearranged and the icons have slightly rearranged, which means if you're using the palettes and the icons, you're going to go stir crazy. But I use Quick Drop, so I don't care because everything works. <laughs> What's even better, there is certain functions that have been renamed. So unbundle and unbundle by name, for example, are gone. They don't exist. They're called cluster properties. Makes a whole load of sense. You're changing a property on a cluster. That's great. What I love is the fact that when I go into LabVIEW Next Gen and I type unbundle by name, it gives me the cluster properties. <laughs> so it, I would like to think that NI either planned this or they got so fed up themselves they put in these links. <laughs> I'll let you guys pick. Um, but there was just one thing that I wanted to highlight as my favorite feature that I found in four hours. So we're all familiar with that tiny little box in the top corner where we've got to have pixel accuracy to try and select that one square inside that smaller square. You click on that to do your connector pane. And if you're me, I always forget to change the tab control on my front diagram, so I then link to the tab control rather than the control I wanted to. And I didn't realize how much connecting the connector pane and normal LabVIEW is a pain in the neck until I use NabVIEW Next Gen, which is a problem now because I do all my work in normal LabVIEW and I now want this feature, but hey. So LabVIEW Next Gen, when you go to edit the connector pane, this pops up. First thing it does is it takes up your whole screen, so you don't have to be a ninja with a mouse to be able to collect on everything really accurately. If you click on an input or an output, it gives you a drop-down list of all your controls on your front panel. If you then start typing, it filters that list. So it's really, really easy to quickly connect up your connect pane. There was a ton of other um, options that I believe you can now create sub-VIs that are bigger in comparison to other ones. So say if you've got a PID loop and you want to go, this is the PID maths, it's really important, it can be bigger. You can do random shapes, but I kind of went CLD exam, I'm not going to get any marks for making it pretty. So I kind of ignored it, but that's one of the areas I want to play with in the future. So they're the really good points. So this is probably what the rest of you guys are more interested in. What has changed and what caught me out? So the best one, local variables. This one caught me out terribly in the exam. Um, I've actually got my code with me, so I can show you all if I'm being brave enough. If not, I can share it to you later, and then you guys can all laugh about me behind my back. Um, sorry, that always done that. We're all used to normal LabVIEW. You go into LabVIEW, you right create, create local variable, yeah? We're all happy with that. LabVIEW next gen, you go right click, create. Oh God, where's it gone? I'm in the exam, where's my local variables? Ah, minor panic set it in. So I went, grab the reference and then a property node for it. Don't do that, it's a really wrong thing to do. There is something called create duplicate terminal. And guess what that means? It's a local variable with a different name. Um, <laughs> it creates a duplicate terminal, and I guess that's why it's called that. It's completely identical. Makes a load of sense. I'm one of these people who like phoning up NI with a problem. So I immediately went, oh, what happens if I create two controls on the front panel called control one, so you've got two of them, then spawn 10 duplicate terminals that are both. There'll be 20. We won't know what they're connected to, and all hell will break loose. NI know, saw me coming, and you can't do this. Everything on your front diagram has to be uniquely named. So it's not a problem unless you're taking old code through the migration tool and it will append your uh, names. So if you didn't know there's a migration tool, something you need to be aware of because it might catch you out. Okay, property nodes and invoke nodes. Wish I knew it was doing that. Uh, there we go. Right, again, in the exam, right click, create. Oh, where's my property nodes and invoke nodes gone? Help. Again, time is sticking away going, where are they gone? Quick drop saving with property nodes. Yeah, you just type it in quick drop, property node, and it appears, so that's great. The amount of properties supported is very limited, so just bear that in mind. 
Um, the gut feeling is if you've got a string control at the moment, you might have, what, 60 properties, if not more. Uh, I think in the current lab view I was testing, there was only maybe five or 10, but they're the five or 10 you would normally use. So if you're using more exotic ones, think about it a bit carefully. Again, if you're going through the migration tool, it might be something you get caught out on. Invoke nodes on the release I was using aren't in at all, which is a real shame because I love this little VI when I do my exams. So I reinitialize everything on the front panel to defaults Amazing way of getting marks if you're doing the CLA exam because you just dot it around everywhere, get a ton, it's great. So I couldn't do that trick, so I got really fed up, so I got all the references to the controls and put them in manually and chunted as I was doing it in the exam. This was the other one that caught me out. In the exams, I like putting my setting files right next to the executable because, hey, it's quick and easy. Normally, I would put it in program data or something like that, but for an exam, that's how I do it. Do the same thing in LabVIEW Next Gen grab the reference to the main VI, then go, oh, where's my VI path? You can't get the property to that, so you can't use that technique. Um, there is, I found out after the exam, I think there's a function called application directory, which will give you the path. But again, if you've done this technique on a project, you go through the code migration tool, you'll hit this problem. So things just to be aware of. Right, structured behaviors. Before anybody panics, for loops are still for loops, while loops are still while loops. But I just noticed there was a couple of corner case features that we take for granted that aren't there. So, sorry about that. I think I'm running with timings on, which makes this more fun. Um, <laughs> so, anybody who knows me knows I'm dyslexic. So, I use enums in my code everywhere because I'll be damned if I can spell initialization correctly everywhere in my code. So, I put everything with enums. I love the fact in normal lab view when I start typing, it also completes with what I'm doing, because then I only have to get the four, four letters right of initialization, and even I can do that, and the rest of the word comes up. LabVIEW Next Gen doesn't auto-populate. If you finish the whole word and leave it, it will highlight it red if it's invalid, but it won't auto-populate. Which for me, it, I can live with that, but I miss that auto-populating feature. I'm, but I guess the problem is, and I have got like 101 to-do lists, and then Dave's to-do lists are so far down on the other end who, I'll get it one day, I'm sure, but. I think that's gonna be the problem. Even better, so that's great. <laughs> By the way, like, I, we probably don't have time, but I, I don't necessarily agree with, but I know the answers to all of the problems you have. Yeah, I'm sure. Said so far. Yeah, literally, in an exam for four hours, this is what I learned, so it there is. you feel better, almost every single thing you're complaining about here, I have complained about. I know. <laughs> I phoned up, <laughs> yeah, I literally phoned up NI afterwards going, um, I'm presenting on this, am I gonna tell everybody a load of rubbish? And they went, oh, you mean local variables, they're duplicate terminals. So if you have Google, any of these problems you type in, there's an immediate answer, but I was in a little black room for four hours. Right, uh, this is another one, it's a minor one, but I like the fact case structures go green and red around them. It doesn't do that in next gen yet. Um, Steve Watts, who's disappeared, came up with a good point when I gave this presentation. If you look at all the new features in LabVIEW and what's not in NextGen, you can probably work out roughly where the two development paths split because there's a few of these things that have appeared that I've gone, oh, and he's got a good point. It might be true. Or it could be that of nonsense, so who knows. Sub-diagram labels, that's another one that I noticed isn't in on the release I was using. Um, interestingly, if you go through the code migration tool, you don't lose your comments, it still puts them as a free floating text, but we know the joys of that when you then try and rearrange your case structure size. So, something to bear in mind. <coughs> right, my favorite topic, the Zoom function. So I've said I've got the love-hate relationship with the Zoom. So, as I said earlier, I love the fact that we can zoom in, zoom out, um, especially for when we're looking for the meatballs and spaghetti or however we want to describe messy code it's gonna be brilliant. I understand there's an academic reason why some people were against putting in a Zoom, and it's because in normal lab, you at least, if somebody's created you your spaghetti code, at least you can sit there and go, well, that wire must have taken like a minute to wire because you dragged it to the edge and it's just doing that slowly moving as you go <laughs> up. So they had to go through some pain, so you kind of go, well, okay. The reality is though, if you've got a bad developer, they're gonna make bad code. So the zoom function isn't gonna stop them, they're just gonna zoom out and they'll be able to do that slightly quicker. That's not why I dislike the zoom. I dislike the zoom because I was triggering it at the wrong times all the bloody time and I felt like a yo-yo. Um, so if you're used to this shortcut, 
if you hold control over a case structure and use scroll, it normally goes through your cases. I zoomed in, I zoomed out, I zoomed in, I zoomed down, I zoomed in. <laughs> turns, yeah, turns out if, it turns out if you're actually hovering over the edge of the case structure, it's fine. But I didn't find that out my four hours exam. I was sitting there, luckily I was in a back room and no customers could hear me, but there were some very rude words being said. <laughs> so, so real quick, I want to just say on that, this. Uh, RNG assessed that in other uh, IDEs where there's really controlled scrolls on this call into the test. Yeah, it, Yeah, okay, so you, it's, I, it made a complete sense, and if I was using normal lab view normally, I would be fine, it was just yeah. during the transitions. Now this one, this one's a brilliant one. <laughs> Who higher likes text controls and hold down control and plus to increase the text size? We've all got really good at it, haven't we? So we all go, we're size 15, we want size 32, so you do that, and you smack that button 17 times. <laughs> You've just zoomed in 170%. <laughs> I was getting cross. Um, like one sub VI then took up my whole screen. So that's why I have this love hate relationship with this Zoom function. Not that I don't think it's a great thing, I think it is a truly great thing, but it's just I was triggering it at the wrong time and driving myself to do lally. Um, this is more of a gut feeling, I don't really have much evidence. I think next gen block diagrams are bigger, and I think that's because the equivalent functions are just rounder and slightly bigger and it just takes a bit more room. So that's just my gut feeling. Um, but if you're one of those people who just go, I must fit all of my code on this one screen, do yourself a favor and zoom out 20% before you start, or otherwise you're gonna have an even <laughs> bigger time. <laughs> right, this one surprisingly caught me out in the exam. Um, we're all used to normal lab view. You click on a wire and you drag it and you create a branch, yeah. You have to right click and go create branch in Next gen. Turns out, after the exam, I found out if you hold down control, it will do it, but didn't know that in the exam. And I found that I was inadvertently wiring backwards by the end. And what I mean by that is you can wire from an indicator back to a, bra a wire without creating the branch. So by the end of the exam, I realized I was wiring backwards just because I didn't want to create the branch, which was a weird thing that within an hour or two I had adapted to. So yeah. It's an interesting one. The control is lovely. Um, I was in two minds if it was a good thing because especially if you've got classes, I know I've done it in the past. I'm sure people who have done uh, classes for the first time, I try to split across two loops, forgetting that that creates two different objects. So at least now if I have to right click create branch and I'm using a class, I'm hoping there'll be that tiny little bell in the back of my brain going, oh, don't do that. The reality is, though, I'll get used to using control and I'll just do it anyway and then chunter later that I've forgotten. Um, I complained about this so much that there is a tools option in NextGen to turn this off so that you can create branches like yeah. you normally do. You that, just didn't get a chance to find it while you were taking the test. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, was, I was manically sitting there trying to find where everything was. Um, I loaded these things I thought would be configurable. Uh, uh, Yeah, that's the last 15 minutes. We'll just claim that as what that I overran by, yeah? <laughs> Great, okay, we all agree I did it in time. Cheers. Um, the other time I thought actually the creating the branch is useful is um, if you don't ever do this on an FBJ because it's stupid, but if you create a cluster and then stick it inside a ray, it takes up shed loads of resources. Every time you branch that K wire, you duplicate that resource. So potentially leaving this off as an option, especially if you're in those environments, Again, maybe the, a little alarm bell will go off, but I think everybody will just get used to doing the other options and it won't matter. But I was trying to justify the design decision. So. Right, this, everything else up to this point, I can live with, I'm happy with, they're minor changes. This one personally drives me nutty and I'm really hoping there's a solution to this one. Um, you can't put icons on type defs. Like most of you probably go, blah, I don't do that anyway. But I have a messaging framework and I have 160 TCP messages. I put on all of my type defs the command number and then a little acronym. It tells me so much. That's why I use them. It's brilliant. Now, have you next gen? As far as I could tell, you can either have it fully exposed 
So I have 70 settings in one thing and that takes up my whole screen. Or I can dock it and it becomes that tiny little pink thing on the corner. <laughs> I, I, I want my icon back. Um, I gave this presentation and then Steve Watts was around and he came up with an elegant solution, which I really hope I don't have to do, which is then stick it in a sub BI just so I can give it an icon. <laughs> and God help me if I have to do that, but I will do that because it is. Yeah. I did find out you can actually turn on the label like next to the little pink dot. But pictures say a thousand words, I'm dyslexic, I want back my icons. Um, but hey, rant over. Right, summary. Really easy to pick up. I was actually surprisingly impressed how quickly you could pick it up and get going with it, which is all good. Um, the learning curve was, well, I did it in an hour, so can't be that bad. Uh, with Google, could have been faster. We have great new features, including Zoom. Um, and I know I haven't spoken about it, but uh, when I gave this first presentation, oh, I should have said this, I run the Cambridge Lab user group, um, and we did a hands-on session, and we then got to play with LabVIEW Next Gen in the afternoon session and they've got a really good demo about how to do web VIs. It's well worth having a play if you want to look at next gen. It, the web VI bit is just awesome. Um, the front panels just look better. Everybody knows that next gen looks shiny. It's true. Um, currently, there's features missing that I wasn't expect to find in missing, like being able to get the VI path name and some of the properties, invoke nodes, those type of things. It turns out they might already be here, so we can all relax. Um, but the, I'm stealing tons of uh, glory out of Seamus at the top there, who did a presentation on the migration tool. And it does work, kind of. <laughs> uh, it's a bit like the wire cleanup. If you put rubbish in, you get mega rubbish out. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, m the advice was from Seamus, basically, um, it's well worth tidying up your LabVIEW code in normal LabVIEW before even considering putting it through the code migration tool and do it in small elements. Don't go, hey, I've got a 2000 VI pro thing, chuck it at the migration tool because either one or two things will happen, it'll crash, or you'll have 2000 VIs that are empty and then you have to go and put the code in manually, <laughs> which is a bit pointless. So yeah, that's kind of my gut feeling very quickly on how I think next gen. Would I use next gen, I guess is the golden question. Maybe if it was a very small PC application that was low risk, that just was a PC, then yeah, I might give it a shot because why not? Somebody's got to jump at some point. Um, if the project needed lots of internet activity issues like with the web VIs, then is actually, that would be well worth doing it. Obviously, it currently doesn't support FPJs and our compact Rios. Uh, which is where almost all my work is at the moment, so that counts me out. Um, or if you've got a large, complex system, um, a bit like any of the frameworks we were talking about earlier, because as far as I'm aware, almost all of the tools currently haven't been remade for next gen, which means we're doing a lot of this from scratch. So I want to leave you with one thought, and I'm stealing... Uh, is Michael Strathman in the room? Oh, cool, he's not here. He's in the other room. Oh, OK, he's in the other room. Uh, OK. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim all of his credit. He's not in the room to yell at me. Um, in that hands-on session in the afternoon, uh, we found out that you can web publish from normal LabVIEW and then pick it on LabVIEW Next Gen. So where I see this is potentially really useful is I like using Compact Rios and FPGAs. Uh, apart from there's sometimes customers come and see you and go, right, I've got this product and it's got to last for 30 years. And you're going, right, you're going to have to do a hardware cycles and all that type of stuff. If you can potentially develop your GUI in LabVIEW Next Gen, then that won't need to potentially be redone in 10 years' time. So you could get the benefits of new LabVIEW for the higher risk, more complicated section that you then put on your other target, and then you just do the front end in LabVIEW Next Gen. So I'm currently working on a demo in my free time, so basically I spent 10 minutes on it so far. But I've got, um, <laughs> I've got one of those embedded um, see Rio evaluation boards that's got a little D-pad on it. Um, and I've got the mo world's most rudimentary snake game where I'm web publishing the directions off that D-pad 
then going up to LabVIEW Next Gen, I've got a LabVIEW, LabVIEW Next Gen web VI that's then showing that front panels. So you can definitely do it as a proof of concept. Michael Stratham was the one who originally worked it out, and I'm just now stealing all of his glory. But I think that's my point of view is a really interesting time that you could use it because it, you don't have to take the full jump and the full risk of doing everything in LabVIEW Next Gen because unless you like causing pain for yourself, maybe not the best thing to do, but doing the combination of the two is potentially quite interesting. So you've basically got a choice now. I have gone really quickly because I know everybody wants to get home. I've, according to the clock, I've got four minutes. So you can either ask questions or I have got my code so I can vaguely show you the code. So any preferences? versions as well so it's really easy yeah out of uh, box communication so I think if you did it with that TCP anything that I guess is non lab view specific it would definitely work um, but yeah it was nice to see that the web services and all that type of stuff were cross compatible do people want to see the code I don't mind <laughs> oh <laughs> Yeah, I shouldn't have offered that, should I? I should have learned. We'll, we'll, we'll do the normal thing okay. if, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't look like Apple. Yeah, uh, to, uh, if there's anybody here who certifies people, do not take my uh, architect <laughs> things away if this is wrong. That's unfair. Um, I will probably talk to the guys from GDevCon. I can distribute this later um, so you can have a look. If you take this code, unless I fix it, you'll find that I've hard-coded the path to the settings file because I got so cross on the exam that I couldn't work out to do it. So it does run, but <laughs> it's going to be my conclusion. So, right, so block diagram. So one of the things is now the block diagram and your panels are all linked at the top. That took me a while to find. Uh, please don't crash laptop. I should have really bought a mouse so we could use the zoom function that I complain about, but hey, never mind. Um, so it's very simply, uh, hold on, we can use the control minus, which is the zoom that, there is a reason for it, okay. So it's really simple, I'm sure everybody's familiar with this, it's just an event pro producer consumer loop, so nice and easy. Um, but there was a few things that I did wrong that we can all laugh at me for, now that I know I did it wrong. Uh, so the first thing was, Yay, that setting the stop button. Again, don't do you that, use duplicate controls, but hey, it's what I did. On my attempt at doing the exam, the init uh, GUI sub VI was where I was hoping that I could reuse the initialize everything to defaults, but I couldn't. I don't think thinking. Uh, if you ever want to demo LabVIEW Next Gen Live, load it beforehand or otherwise you've got a really awkward five minute wait when everything loads in the background because I did that when I was presenting. So I've learned. Um, come on, open. Okay, we'll skip over that one. Um, so I, as I said, I'm dyslexic, so one of the first things I did was I made a little lookup table with all the strings because then I could use an enum to reference them in the rest of my code. So that's all that little sub VI is doing. Then got queues, so producing those. And then, yeah, it's just a producer consumer loop. Um, but it's things like this that were annoying me. So that's, admittedly, that's command plus status. So if you're in the dev environment, it's actually quite useful. You can hover over it and it does tell you that. But if you're doing code review statically and you don't have access to the dev environment, you can't get that information. So I like that you can sniff the information. That's quite cool. I just dislike the fact that I can't get that. Just enough of on about my icons, I'll just rant about it for too long otherwise. Um, I don't think bookmarks are in unless I'm wrong at the moment, so I randomly tried that at one point just to see if that would work. Um, so at the bottom, and then we've just got a bog standard um, a consumer loop, which is just state driven, um, where I've got all the different ones, and I hand, how did I handle timeout again? Oh yeah, so if I don't get a message, then I go into the timeout case, and then I think in there I got some logic that you would reset a timer and then wait. So that's how I was handling the timeout and if it was idle. So the exam itself, I don't think we're gonna learn anything amazing from my attempts at LabVIEW, but I thought it was a really good way of getting a feel for, A, how easy it is to pick up, what things aren't there, um, 
we did start playing around with the application builder, and I think I've been very unfair in saying this because I think it's been updated in 2.1, but when we tried to build this into an XE, we found that you had to pull in all the sub BIs because it wouldn't pick up the dependencies when I was playing with it 2.0. That's probably been fixed, I hazard a guess. Um, but when I was trying it, that was one of the things we found. Um, so anybody got any? Oh, yeah. sorry. So I only looked briefly at it, but I think there was a problem that we found that you can only build one executable per main BI. That could, uh, literally we spent about five minutes in the afternoon session then yeah. trying to break everything. So I, I think we couldn't, we couldn't find how we could make multiple executables with one main BI, with the same main BI, but yeah. Um, there's a new section which I, not even going to attempt to try and explain to you because I don't understand it myself. There's a system configuration view, which does seem quite interesting. You seem to have like a top level map that shows your hardware and what hardware is connected. And the build, if I remember right, the build routine is related to that view. But it's something that's very new. And I didn't attempt to do that in four hours on an exam, <laughs> which is understandable. So um, highlight execution, probes, all of that stuff is there. So. Uh, from that point of view, I didn't see anything wrong with the debugging. Any other questions? Cool. Well, I've got a flashing clock at the top, which probably tells me it's time's up and then we can go home. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I will make sure my code is available. If anybody's got any questions afterwards, feel free to chat. Cheers.